I have, I, I, I'm kind of wishing I had pictures of dragons. Because the sharks were beautiful, <laughs> I thought I should have dragons. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about what I think the power of one is. And I, I think the power of one is an interesting concept because it's always really easy to understand it when you look at it through a rearview mirror. We can go back and any, whether it's social change, whether it's political parties that are fraught and brought up, whether it is business empires, if we look hard at them, we can usually find that there's an individual who has done something amazing to make them come to life. Somebody somewhere had conviction, believed in something, and made it happen. So it's kind of easy to understand that when you look at it. But you know what? The power of one can also be negative. The power of one can also be about negative influence. How many of you have had maybe an uncaring parent or a boss that was really bad or potentially just dealt with somebody in an assignment at school who was a whiner? I'm guessing there's a few of you out there. Yeah, oh, see, hands are raised. Um, I think that their negativity that's out there for the, through Power of One is actually very, very scary. That's how you get the Qaddafis of the world. That's how you get the Bin Ladens. And on the more ridiculous side, that's how you get the Kim Kardashians. <laughs> you know what? She's not doing any good in this world, but she's focused and she's using her power and her drive to influence what I think is a very negative trend in the world in terms of what really is important. So if you think about positive trends and negative trends and you think about all of those things and you think about where that leads as the power of one, it leads me to a story about a trip that I took and learned where I learned the biggest lesson about the power of one and about leadership. And that was in Afghanistan of all places. A couple of years ago, I got asked to go to Afghanistan to, to boost the morale of the troops. So I was asked to go with a bunch of hockey players and uh, musicians. It wasn't such a bad gig, right? I thought, hey, how bad can this be? They can, I can watch them play sports. I can listen to the bands. Um, but actually, all kidding aside, I was really scared to go. My family didn't want me to go. Everybody who knew me said, Arlene, don't go. This is a ridiculous thought. It's dangerous. It's scary. Why should you go? But I went because I believe that there was a lot of Canadians who were supporting the freedoms and the um, privileges that I had as a Canadian. And there were a lot of people that were also trying to help the Afghanistans to live a better life. And it felt like the right thing to do, so I said I would go. Now, I really didn't understand kind of how scary it was going to be until I got over there. Once I was there, I was asked if I would go um, with a few people, with six of us, to the forward operating bases, to actually where the war was um, happening on the front lines. And I got asked to go, and I thought, well, you know what, okay, I can do this. I'm going to go, and I'm going to see what this is about. Let me paint that picture for you. Imagine it's 45 degrees out. And somebody comes up to you and says, here's a flak jacket and a helmet, and here's your backpack. And I want you to get in that Black Hawk helicopter, and then we're going to fly you up, and we're going to take you over the war zone, and we're going to take you to five of the forward operating bases where the general's going to talk to the soldiers. Now, you can't tell anybody at home that you're going because of the security issues. We don't want people to maybe shoot you down if they know you're going. Uh, and they don't care that there's a dragon on board, trust me. Um, the second thing is, is we can't insure you. And the third thing is, is you, um, you, you have to decide right away whether you're going to go. So I couldn't phone home, I couldn't be insured, and I had to decide right away. So I said, you know what, I'm going to do this. I can do this. This is important. I can, I can get there. But as that helicopter was lifting up, there was me and a couple of hockey players and a couple snipers on either side. And you know how you have those moments in your life, you go, what the hell am I doing here? I was going, what the hell am I doing here? And as that, as that um, helicopter was lifting up, there was uh, one of the uh, bodyguards that was there with us who looked at me like this, and he did one of these. Arlene, if this helicopter goes down, you effing follow me. And I went, okay, <laughs> this is real. And as we went into the front lines, I thought to myself, what am I going to do here? What am I going to learn? And I'll tell you what I learned. I watched General Walt Matichuk give the same speech five times to anywhere from 50 people, 50 troops, to 250 troops. And here's what he said. He said to the troops, your job is really important. What you're doing matters. I really need you to stay focused because if you don't stay focused, not only your life as a soldier is at risk, but the life of your team and everybody around you is at risk. That's the power of one. That's the power, if one person fails, everybody can fail. And in fact, their lives can be at risk. I left there and I learned about moral leadership. I learned about a man who didn't speak with fancy words, 
who didn't, wasn't a hugely great orator, but was a fantastic, simple leader who understood the power of telling people what they needed to do and why they needed to do it and help them to understand that if they came along with him, they would do something that was meaningful and important. Now, I'm a pacifist. I was raised that way. And I never thought that I would go to war and see and learn anything. But I did. When I came home, I thought a lot about that lesson, and I thought about whether or not I had actually learned anything. And it struck me that leaders are interesting as the power of one. And I'll tell you why. I think that we tend to look at leaders like they have some magical quality. People who are on television, people who have bigger paychecks than we do, people who have bigger titles than we do. We look at them and we go, oh, well, they're different than we are. You know what? Those are people that have, like, something going on, man. There's something inside of them that's way different than me. They're better than I am. And you know what? Nothing could be farther from the truth. It's such a bunch of crap. And I'm going to tell you why. In my job at Venture, in my role on the television show, I have met some very, very serious players in this world. I've had the opportunity and the privilege to talk to people that you would go, holy smokes, you met that person? And you know what I have found? They are all insecure. They all have the same challenges and the same issues inside that every single one of you do. But what we do is we look at them and we start to compare who we are inside to what they portray themselves as on the outside. And we think they're better than we are. And we think their voice matters more than ours does. And we think that they have a better place in this world as a result. The issue is, as we go home, we look in the mirror, and we think we don't see the power of us as an individual. Some of us look in the mirror and say, I have nothing. I am worth zero. I'm not smart enough. I'm not young enough, old enough, attractive enough. I don't have a big idea. And we think about the outcomes and the outputs of what people have done rather than who those people are. And so the challenge, I think, in The Power of One is to think about what can you do yourself with your own voice and what happens when you give up that voice to somebody else. When I was 19, younger than many of you in this room, I think, maybe, um, I uh, got married. At the mid-20s, I had four children. By the age of 31, I was divorced with uh, four children, no university degree, no education past high school, and uh, no training in any job. And I had taught myself to believe that I couldn't ever do anything. I was going to be just what I was. I didn't have any opportunity. And if you'd asked me if I'd be standing here today, I would have said absolutely, positively not. Because I never saw myself that way. I was told over and over again that my voice wasn't important, that my vote didn't count, that everything I thought and said was not as important as somebody else who was smarter, brighter, bigger, faster, all of those things. At 31, divorced, I had to go and work. Now, poverty is an amazing enabler. It's an amazing way to push people, unfortunately, into doing things that they never thought they could do. So I had to figure out how I was going to make a living. So I worked really hard. I found that way to do that. And I had to do that by telling myself I could, by giving myself permission to think and feel that my voice was important enough to be heard in this world. I think it's a shame that when we listen to all these things, that we pivot on a person instead of pivoting on ourselves. To me, that is the power of one. The power of one is that you're all going to go home and think about what you have as a right to decide for yourself. No one's asking you to give it up, but yet some of us are. Some of us let other people vote for us. Some of us let other people choose for us. Some of us let other people decide for us what's important in our lives. And we do it because we just don't think that our voices matter. But what matters more than that vote? What matters more than your own voice? What matters more than what you can do as an individual to make your own life better so and in fact you can have an outcome or an output similar to the ones in the stories you've heard today? It starts with overcoming the fears, the obstacles, the issues, the challenges, the reasons why you tell yourself you can't. And it starts with telling yourself that in fact you can indeed change the world. So to me, the power of one is quite simple. 
It is about believing that anything is possible if you let yourself be heard. If you don't let yourself be heard, you will always wonder whether or not you could do the things that you want to do, and you will always be looking through the lens and the filter of somebody else. So I don't have a complicated message for you today. I want to stand in front of you as somebody who has had an amazing opportunity to be on television, an amazing opportunity to raise children, to have grandchildren, to make a difference in my own world, to go to war and meet and see people that I never thought I would learn from, to meet leaders of this world, and to see and understand that who I am on the inside is actually the most important thing in terms of being able to help anybody else in this world. So I challenge all of you after this huge day of learning and listening and understanding and being motivated and captivated by the amazing speakers that you've seen today to go home, look in the mirror, and say to yourself, my vote counts, my opinion matters, it's okay to feel differently than somebody else does, I am going to go and do the things that matter most to me, and I am going to use the power of one to be the best person that I can be, because that indeed is what will change the world. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ernie. Thank you. Awesome.